This video is the first in a tutorial of how to use the UCSC Genome Browser. Uh, so first, let's figure out how to get to the Genome Browser. My favorite way is with our favorite search engine, Google. Uh, so if you just type in UCSC Genome Browser on Google, you can get straight to the home page. Now, uh, I should start by saying that this tutorial is intended for students who have a solid background in biology, let's say uh, AP Bio or freshman biology, and want to know more about how real biologists conduct their research, especially in genetics. Uh, so first, let's go to the Genomes tab of the UCSC Genome Browser. And here's what we find. Now, for me, the the genome browser looks pretty complicated, but when we break it down piece by piece, we'll, we will see that it is organized quite logically. Uh, so first up here, let's direct our attention to this box. Uh, we're, we're selecting the genome that we want to investigate. So obviously, we want the human genome, which are mammals, not insects. And furthermore, we need to pick the appropriate assembly. Now, over the years, our knowledge of the human genome has gotten more and more refined, and as a result, uh, our assemblies have gotten more accurate. These days, a lot of researchers are still relying on the 2009 assembly HG, Human Genome 19. So let's stick with that. And now we can go anywhere in the human genome that we want. Uh, so how about a gene that we are probably all familiar with? HbA1 is one of the polypeptides contained in the hemoglobin protein. So I just clicked submit and the genome browser brought us to the hemoglobin A1 gene. What do we see here? Wow, this is clearly a ton of information, but let's break it down one step at a time. Uh, so first we can see uh, right here that the hemoglobin gene, well this particular one, is 842 base pairs long. That is quite short for a gene, but it might sound long to you. I wouldn't want to write out that many nucleotide letters. And uh, right below we can see where the hemoglobin gene lies in chromosome 16. Hemoglobin gene is very, very early in chromosome 16. Now, you might say, uh, Sam, it doesn't look very early. It's already at the 200,000 position in chromosome 16. But the fact of the matter is that chromosome 16 is about 100 million base pairs long. So this 200,000 figure, which is the coordinate of the hemoglobin gene, is actually quite early in the chromosome. Uh, now that we get a sense of where the hemoglobin gene is in chromosome 16, let's take a closer look at the structure of that gene, which we can see right down here. Uh, so, let's see. Genes are made of several parts. They're all obviously DNA, which gets transcribed into RNA, but that RNA can be categorized into different components, namely the exons, which are represented in these thick boxes. There's one exon, second exon, and the third exon. The introns, which are these dashed lines, the introns one and two, you can see that they're the the direction of the arrows on that intron, perhaps the resolution might not be good enough, but the direction of the arrows indicates that the gene is oriented in the plus direction. The plus direction means that uh, the start of the gene is at a lower number than the end of the gene. And um, that doesn't have to be the case for every gene. It could be the other way around because you'll recall DNA is double-stranded and the the way that the gene is encoded in the DNA could be in the plus direction or the minus direction. Uh, the cell doesn't really 
care, it shouldn't matter. Um, now you'll notice that before the first exon, which the start codon for that exon is indicated with this green box, we have the 5' prime UTR, uh, untranslated region is UTR, and after the stop codon in red, in the last exon, we have the 3' prime UTR, another untranslated region. So as you will recall from biology, your biology class, those untranslated regions, they are transcribed by, by RNA polymerase, but the ribosome does not read the codons from those regions. And, and furthermore, you'll recall that the introns of the gene are removed in the process called splicing. So really, it is only the exons that get uh, translated into a, into a protein. In this case, the protein would be one of the peptides in hemoglobin. Now, scrolling down, we see that the genome browser offers a truly enormous amount of information and it's it's really much it's too much to cover right now and honestly it can look overwhelming but uh, in the in the coming tutorials we're going to get comfortable with all of this information and uh, all the amazing things you can do with this research tool so first why don't we just get comfortable uh, manipulating the genome browser so there are a few ways to explore the finer structure of this hemoglobin gene. Uh, we can use the navigation arrows up here. For instance, if I want to move 10% to the left. Now the start of my gene is a bit later in, in the window. Or if I want to zoom in, let's say zoom in three times. Now uh, this is one of the, this is the second exon, I, I believe, and you can see that it's obviously larger. Um, but in addition to these, uh, more, uh, these buttons, you can slide the genome browser that has the same effect as moving it, or you can highlight the area that you want to zoom into and it will zoom in. So you can see that we've, we've zoomed in sufficiently far where we can see the actual nucleotide letters that make up this gene. And furthermore, the codons that are, that these letters specify. For instance, leucine, serine, phenyl, phenylalanine. Uh, so we just got really, really close into the, the structure or really the sequence of the hemoglobin A1 gene. Uh, so that concludes what I want to say for this video. I encourage you to make a list of your, let's say, 10 favorite genes and try to find each one of them in the genome and try to explore the, the structure and their, their sequence. Uh, so that concludes this video and I uh, look forward to the next one. See you guys.